Um, so, I have um, some announcements I need to make. We still have to figure out a schedule for you to go today. To that, that um, to so, announcement number one is TCS has set up, this isn't it, has set up an online learning academy thing. Um, they pushed out that information um, last week. So um, if you can see it on my screen, it says launches online academy. There's a link to it on the CCS website. And if you go to that, it has a bunch more information. Um, over here on the left, there's a whole lot of stuff. So what I want you guys to realize is that myself and your other teachers have already prepared for this. And so mostly what this is going to tell you if you read into it is that um, you need to be doing iReady <laughs> and a certain amount a day. And we've already incorporated that into our curriculum that I've been creating for you guys. So this online academy stuff right now, you don't really need to worry about any of it. Don't do anything extra other than what we are assigning you. Um, because all of us, William, Saul, Miller, myself, we already prepared for this and we are already incorporating what they're asking of you. Um, that's why the iReady started because we knew this was coming. Also, you also, you all have your own email accounts. So um, you can go to this for more directions, but your email is just your student ID number with the at columbus.k12.oh.us. And you can access said email. Here's how to access your email. You go to ccsoffice.org. And then you'll put in your email and then you'll put in the, your birthday password, same password you always use. Um, and then you will be able to send and receive messages from anybody that has an at columbus.k12.oh.us email. So that it's internal only. You shouldn't be getting any kind of spam mail. You can't send out to like an iCloud or a Gmail or a Yahoo. Like you can only email people within the Columbus City Schools emails. So if, it, if you click on the CCS office, it'll take you to a screen that like has you log in, but since this is mine and I did it already, uh, this is what your email is gonna look like. Um, it's going to look like, you know, you have your inbox. If you want to write a new message, you can click new message and then you can type like Alexandra Miller and she should pop up or you could type Erin Audubray and I should pop up or Emma Corbin and she's going to pop up. Um, so hopefully let's see if I type Marshawn. Hey, Marshawn popped up. So now I can email Marshawn and I can be like, hey, what's up? What's up, bro? How's it going, bro? Um, and then you click send when you, you know, put your subject and blah, blah, blah. Do you guys have any questions about any of that fun stuff? Nope. Okay, so that is a good way to reach out to your teachers or like Madam Jameson or Thorsberg or really anybody or McClafferty. Um, we all have CCS emails. So if you guys need anything and you don't want to post it on Google Classroom, um, please feel free to reach out to us and get some help. Um, Wait, can you show me how to get there again? My mom called me for something. Yeah. So I just went to the, I went to the CCS homepage first. And then the first thing that's popping up is this online academy. So here's the online academy thing. And then over here it says student email access. 
It says it's not letting the page come up. Weird. But you'll log in to ccsoffice.org. You said ccs.org? No. ccsoffice.org. So ccsoffice dot org. Okay. Any other questions about that? Uh, no, I don't want to. Okay, my computer's trying to open Keynote. <laughs> so just a second. <laughs> I don't want to open Keynote right now. Okay, so last time we were together, Lorsberg, I'm not sure where Brian is. He's usually always on. I'm not sure where he's at. That's okay. I'm going to um, hopefully join one of Monsieur Saul's lessons later this week, too. So hopefully I'll catch up with him. I'm still going to stay on yours a little bit just to see what, what you guys are doing. Brilliant. Okay, so the other new things are I added some M, some, some, some things. Oh, this. <laughs> Madame Ortega was told by the counseling department that she needs to provide you guys with Naviance lesson thingies. So she is now connected as a teacher in our Google Classroom for ELA. And if you go to college and career, she's got some stuff for you to do on Naviance. And she put a little note up here for you guys. So um, please add that to the list of things you are now responsible for. Um, you could comment on these or email her if you guys have questions. I don't really have any information. But if you reach out, I can always get a hold of her. Okay, you're gonna have three new iReady assignments that I will come tomorrow, and they are not due until April 20th. So they aren't due until the Monday after spring break. For spring break, you will get no new assignments. So you could easily get those done this week. Um, I added a new assignment uh, called Sketch Notes Characters. We're going, and we kind of started this, but we did it kind of boringly more not very interestingly so we're going to uh, make little sketches of how the different characters are related to each other and you can do this in google drawings attach it to the assignment you could create a short video and send it to me through your email you could draw it on paper send me a picture really any way that you can come up with to kind of create something for yourself little notes little pictures to help you understand how all these characters are connected. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, so let me go ahead and open up my situation. So the idea behind sketch notes is that basically they're little drawings that help you understand something so it's allowing you what's happening um it's allowing you to interpret the information and put it into a way that you can understand and use more easily so this is an example of sketch notes using our specific characters. So we've got Theseus and Hippolyta. They live in Athens. This is an olive tree. You can totally tell. Uh, this is Theseus. He's the Duke. Look, he's got like all this nice robe and bling and top hat. Uh, this is Hippolyta. I can't wait for our wedding because she doesn't really care. There's her little engagement ring and her sword because she's in Amazon. And then you have all these fine folks. 
that are all related. So you've got Aegeus, who is Hermia's father. And his whole thing is you are going to marry Demetrius or die. Because he's kind of crazy. And then Hermia is over here and she's like, no, my heart belongs to Lysander. I'm not going to listen to you. Forget you. And Lysander is over here, like, just obsessed with Hermia. And he's like, run away with me. And then you got Demetrius over here. He's got a fancy hat, you know. Uh, Hermia, I'll marry you. I could love you. He really just loves her because she's cute. And Aegeus wants him to marry her. And then Helena, who he was like, I totally love you, Helena. And then Hermia walked by and he's like, just kidding. I love Hermia. He's like telling her to get away. And Helena's down here like, I love you, Demetrius. I'll follow you anywhere. And then Helena and Hermia are best friends. You guys remember all this jazz? Is, any, is anybody still with me? Yes. Cool. Bailey remembers. Brilliant. Okay, so we are going to continue with this. Do you guys want me to give you a little bit of time to, do you want me to sketch some of these with you? Yeah. How much are we sketching? We're going to sketch all the characters. Oh. So, alternatively, Wait till you guys see this. You're going to love it. You could make a little video. Hi, hey there. My name is Casey. Uh, I am going to do this in three different ways. I'm a carpenter, Amazon, and you're in the But you know what? I'm actually a pretty nice guy. You're clear. So, you could make a little video. <laughs> what'd, you, what'd you think of my video, guys? That was great. I made, I made more. Hi. The name's Ag But we're just going to move on. And we're going to draw pictures, okay? But I'll post those videos so you guys can watch them and laugh at me later, okay? Um, all right. So, let's, let's sketch these little, little folks. We started this, but we kind of did like a boring version. So I'm just going to go down here and start a new version. Okay, so we got, we got Theseus. That's how you spell Theseus. And Hippolyta. And they, they live in Athens, so we're going to, we're going to just, Apparently there are olive trees in Athens. I was told this by one of the sixth graders and they were very upset that I didn't have my little olive tree. I don't, you know what? I don't even know if this is what an olive tree looks like. Nobody knows. Hey, look, I've got, I've got some olives, some black olives. I don't think that's where a black olive come from, but you know what? Definitely don't think that's what it looks like. Here, <laughs> it's good nonetheless. <laughs> Can we draw this on our lit notebook? Yes. Anywhere you want. Okay. You know what? It's great. It's great drawing. Okay. And then you got our man Theseus. This is important. So he's going to have a, like a really big top hat. He's just hanging out. It's Theseus. I'm going to label him. Happy, happy guy. Nice, nice, happy fella. Um, you know, he likes, he likes ties. He likes to wear ties. So we're going to give him a little tie. 
Um, he also he also has a, a pretty neat cape. Who's Theseus the and Hippolyta? Theseus is the Duke. He's like the leader of the the Greek village they live in. Wait, so what does the olive tree have to do with anything? Is that Hippolyta? Is the olive tree Hippolyta? No, this is Greece. It's my setting. Oh. But who's Hippolyta being? Oh, okay. Well, we'll, you know, we'll review that. Okay, so here's Theseus. He's, you know what? He even has a cool gold chain because he's just, he's just real cool. And then I'm the Duke. I remember the Duke is like the leader of the town. He's, he's like the go-to guy. He's like the president of this little town. Um... I beat Hippolyta. Nope, that sounds like he. That doesn't. That doesn't sound right. Mm-mm. Um. Oh, what to say? What did he do? He's got little ears, you know. Um. <clears throat> I will marry Hippolyta. So he's gonna he's gonna marry her, um, and you know she's she's a queen, so she's got this big fancy dress situation. She's got like curly flowing hair. I you know I don't know if she does, but she does now. Can you guys see Hippolyta? Um, you know what else? She also has a sword. Just want this neat little sword. Hanging off her dress. She's pretty. She's a pretty happy gal. She's got a crown because you know queen. I'm so excited for our wedding. Are you guys drawing this with me? Marshawn, I'm not sure you are unless you're drawing it with your mouth, like with your control. And... Is that how you're doing it? Wait, can I just like take a screenshot of this? I'll post it. But I kind of want you to do your own. Well, yeah. But I'll post whatever we do today together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the Google Classroom. Yes. Okay, let's do a GS. Does anybody remember anything about a GS? Aegea, I mean, Aegea likes Hermia, I think. No, he is connected to Hermia. That is a large I torso. Isn't Aegea his, her dad? Yes. But he's like real angry at her. He's got a mustache. just gesturing wildly in his tunic. 
daughter Hermia, you will marry Demetrius or die. Because remember, he said that. He was like, either he, he went to the Duke and he's like, hey, Duke, tell Hermia to marry Demetrius or tell her she's going to die. And Theseus is like, ah, that's a little much, buddy. But you know what, Hermia? Um, marry Demetrius or be a nun. I'm going to label it Gius. Because these names are super weird. Okay, so then we got his daughter. We got Hermia. So she's over here. In her fancy dress. And she's got, she's got long pink flowing hair. Some nice bangs happening. Remember, she's like real pretty. Everybody, everybody likes Hermia. No. Um, she's very proper. Actually, I want her hands out like this. Nope. Um, I will run away with Lysander. So she's strong willed and she's like, I'm not marrying that guy, I'm running away. Because she's super, remember we drew like a big heart for her and Lysander? She and Lysander are big in love. Here's Lysander. Just, just smitten. He's going to wear a neat little hat. Hermia, run away with me. Is this all familiar? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> mm, these are funny looking. Okay, does anybody remember what Demetrius is all about? Demetrius doesn't like, doesn't love Helena, and he half loves Hermia. He's like, okay, fine, that's, that's fine. Okay, so... Demetrius. Demetrius is like, I don't know, he's like smirky. Kind of, kind of sly, you know? He's making all these girls think that he loves them. Gonna give him a a little hat. Sure. I'll marry Hermia.
I could probably love ish her. <laughs> big, big commitment. <laughs> Love-ish. Yep, that sounds right. I'm gonna make this. Yes. She is excited to marry Hermia because she's cute. Helena, go away. Any other things I should add to Demetrius? Okay. Uh, how are we all doing, folks? We could say wherever Hermia goes, Demetrius follows. Kind of. Whoa, whoa, flat bubble. Okay, and then we have, we have little Helena. Demetrius, I love you so. I'll follow you anywhere. And remember, she ends up like getting herself into unsafe situations because she's just like, don't leave me. Love me. Yeah. Make sense? Are we making sense? Yes. Yeah. Cool beans. So we have these five, which are all connected. And these to Theseus and Hippolyta are basically their wedding like revolves around everything. Because in the end like they're getting married and so that's a big part of all of the action. Okay. Can I go on or do you need a little more time with this? You can go. Okay. So we sort of already did ones for Oberon and Titania um, and Puck, but you might want to go ahead and draw little pictures to go with this. So remember, Oberon is the fairy king. Um, so maybe you would draw like me. Brown. Mm, he's kind of mad. 
And then Titania is the queen. She's also mad. And she's not going to let Oberon take little Prince guy. And then Puck is like a big jokester. <laughs> okay, guys. Um... If your puck is not as good as mine, what were you thinking? Because that's amazing. Okay, but I feel like you guys can do those on your own super quick. Okay, we got new. We got new people. We got to talk about some new peeps. Because you know we have a million characters in this play. Okay, so we did all these, we did all these. Nick Bottom. Who wants to talk about Nick Bottom? Does anybody want to read Nick Bottom's situation? I mean, don't don't all volunteer at once. Come on, Marshawn, you always do stuff for me. I love you, Nick Bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The overconfident we've chosen to play. Pyramus. 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 That's a stupid word. In a play that a group, a group of classmen have decided to put on for Theseus wedding celebration. Bottom is full of advice and self-confidence, but frequently makes silly mistakes and misuse language. Whoa. Is it timelessly? Simultaneous. No. Simultaneous. Simultaneous. Notch. Notch about the. Hold on, hold on, hold on. His simultaneous, which means at the That's same it. time, nonchalance, so very um, casual uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. I forgot what I was. Oh, about the beautiful Gianna, sudden love for him. And awareness of the fact that Puck has transformed his head into that of a donkey mark, the pineapple, wait, pinnacle. Whoa, the mark of a pinnacle of his foolish arrogance. Arrogance. Okay, so the thing about Nick Bottom is he thinks he is like the greatest person ever. So like when um, Nick and Peter and Francis, they all get together and they're like, we're going to put on this play for Theseus at his wedding. They're like, okay, who's going to play Pyramus? And Bottom's like, I'm going to play Pyramus. And they're like, okay, who's going to play Thisbe, which is the love interest? I'm going to be Thisbe. And they're like, okay, who's going to be the lion? I will be the lion. So he wants to be all the parts. And he's like, I am, I am so incredible. But he's, he's pretty stupid. And he and Titania ends up being tricked into falling in love with him um, while he has the head of a donkey. So, you know, that'll be fun. Okay, so we've got Nick Bottom. Can you guys go ahead and do a little, a little sketch of Nick Bottom? What do you, what do you think he looks like? 
Hey boy. Yep, yep, he is. He's a weaver, so he makes like clothes, fabrics. You guys want to see what I'm drawing? It's pretty epic. Yes. I drew a donkey's head. <laughs> Mine kind of looks similar to that. We just, I just added a, um, a little bit of details to the shirt. And we have different hair. So, remember how it said he uses words wrong? I will play Pyramus because I have the commental ability. Commental is not a word. Just FYI. Okay, so I wasn't really drawing this, but if I was going to, I would have put his nose up in the air because the word arrogance came up in there. <laughs> How do I even do that? <laughs> I can't, I don't know. There you go. He looks, like, he looks a little like Pinocchio, but that's fine. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Makes sense. We're, we're working with it. Okay. Oh, Nick Bottom. Bottom. Okay, next we've got Peter Quince. Oh, Nick Bottom's quotation, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. So meaning that being smart and being in love, they don't work together all the time. So when you're smart, you're dumb. I mean, when you're in love, you're dumb. Okay, Peter Quince. Anybody? Okay, Peter Quince is a carpenter and the nominal leader of the craftsmen attempt to put on a play for Theseus's marriage celebration. Quince is often shoved aside by the abundantly confident bottom. During the craftsman's play, Quince plays the prologue. Bless thee, bottom, bless thee, thou art translated. <laughs> That'll make sense later. Okay, so Peter Quince is like the leader of their little group, but then when he's giving directions and stuff, Bottom will always interrupt him and he's like, no, we should do it this way because I, I am the best at all of the things. Um, and then he ends up being like the narrator and he does a little prologue. So go ahead and draw. Um, actually, we're going we're gonna to skip Peter Quince. You guys can draw him later for homework. Um, yeah, because we're running out of time. Francis Flute is a bellows mender. Wow, you probably have no idea what a bellows is. Um, this is a bellows. It is something that 
they would use so it has this like accordion shape and you'd push it together and pull it apart and you'd use it to help start a fire it would add oxygen to the fire so I've seen those in movies in a yeah movie, like yeah so these things okay so this guy nope Francis Flute fixes those things and he's chosen to play Fisbee which is the love interest of Pyramus so back in the day women were not allowed to be on stage but there are always female roles in the plays so men would play them and typically then in like um actors groups like Shakespeare's acting group and stuff it would be a young boy whose voice hadn't changed yet and hadn't started getting facial hair would be a woman so but this is a grown man that's going to be playing a woman Forced to play a young girl in love, the bearded craftsman determines to speak his lines in a high, squeaky voice. Nay, Faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. So this is like horribly embarrassing for him, the fact that he has to play Fisby. Uh, Robin Starling is the tailor chosen to play Fisby's mother in the craftsman's play. And he ends up playing the part of moonshine, not the alcohol, but like the actual moon shine light, the light of the moon. Myself, the man, I, the moon do seem to be. So it's quite by accident that he ends up being the moon. Okay, then you've got Tom Snout. He's the tinker. Tinker's. You know what? I don't know what tinkers do. Let's look it up. <laughs> um, Tim Smith, who mends household utensils. Okay. So he mends probably, he fixes like metal work. Um, he's playing Pyramus's father, but he ends up playing part of the wall that divides the two lovers. So in this Pyramus and Thisbe play, the play within a play, there's a wall and there's like a, a hole in the wall. And that's how the lovers talk to each other is through this hole in the wall. Snug is the joiner. Don't know what that is. Chosen to play the lion. Um, and he worries that his roaring will frighten the ladies in the audience. <laughs> okay, and these last two, you don't need to draw pictures for Philostrate, who's like the master of ceremonies. Um, he like plans all the entertainment. And then there's Peas Blossom, Cobweb, Moat, and Mustard Seed. They're just extra fairies. Do we draw snug? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm going to, so I think one of the easiest ways to do this play, I'm going to see if I can find a video of it because I think it'll help to see it. We'll see, we'll see what happens. So for homework, we draw Nick, Peter, Francis, Robin, Tom and Snug? Yes. Okay. And that's it. And then the next time we're together, Wednesday? Yeah. Um, Wednesday, I'm hoping to read a little bit or get into the play a little bit. And we also have this thing I want to do. And this is the part I don't know how to do. So if you guys look up here, If we were in class, you would all be sitting in a circle and I would be like pulling you guys up one at a time. So I would say like the five act play opens with Theseus, the Duke of Athens announced. So I would pick somebody and they would play Theseus. 
announcing his wedding to, to Hippolyta, and I would pull Hippolyta up, whoever was the next person. The Amazonian queen he recently conquered. He tells everyone to start the celebration. The wedding will have a bounty of food and wine and even play put on by local thespians, um, actors. So I would have you guys acting that out. But so I'm not really sure how we're going to do this. That's why I haven't figured out yet. But we'll do something. <laughs> Maybe I'll just make a little video. <laughs> we'll go from there. Okay, do you guys have any other questions? No. What, what activity were you talking about where you have to be on camera? That one I was just saying. But I don't, I, we didn't get to it. And I'm not completely sure how I'm going to pull it off. Either. You made me put on a show. I'm, I apologize, but we all appreciate that you're close. Hey, I saw you were in, you did Ferris's little challenge the other day, Marshawn. Yeah. Good job, good job. Yeah, it was easy. Which one? Well, we had to work out and send my picture or video or something. Um, I could have yeah. did that. He has all these video. He has these workout challenges on his um, PE s'more newsletter and then on Facebook or not Facebook, uh Instagram. Madam Audenbury. Yeah. Quarantine has me so bored. I built myself a vending machine. Please show me. <laughs> I have to paint it today, but I have the mechanics working. So please, far. please show me. Okay, I really want to see this.